You're listening to The Gary Harris Show on Tide 100.9 in Tuscaloosa. Like for city schools. Click TuscaloosaThread.com for more local news throughout the day. It's absolutely free. Don Hartley, Town Square Media, Tuscaloosa. The Gary Harris Show. You see him host Tide or Insider TV. Crimson Tide kickoff. Play-by-play for Alabama sports and sports director for WVUA 23. It's time for the Gary Harris Show on your home for Alabama sports. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. All right, you know what day it is. It's Friday. So that means it's the TGIF edition of the Gary Harris Show for Friday August 23, 2024, high school football is back. We're just eight days away from Alabama football. We've got college football this weekend, a few week zero games. We'll talk more about that. We've got a lot of excitement. This week has been terrific weather-wise, man. It's been cool in the morning. It's been a little bit too breezy. It's been pleasant at night. Enjoy it for a couple more days because next week, I don't know if you've seen the forecast, but 99 for highs. Hopefully we'll get that out of the way and by next weekend uh, for Alabama's opener on Saturday night against Western Kentucky it'll be pleasant but I wouldn't count on it. <laughs> it seems like when Alabama plays football uh, the first few games around here it's always brutally hot but it's been nice this week. It was nice last night. As I said we had several high school football games. I'm going to run down some of those scores for you coming up here in uh, just a little bit here on the show. I'm Gary Harris, your host. I've got Chase Brumfeld right there, just, uh, oh, about uh, 10, 12 feet from me on the other side of the glass. He's in the control room. I'm in the studio. He'll be manning the uh, controls and taking your phone calls on the Pinnacle Park at North River Hotline at 205-342-9904. That's 205-342-9904. We're also just a week away from our Alabama football trivia giveaway contest beginning courtesy of T-Town Menswear and T-Town Gallery in the University Mall. We'll be giving away, I think uh, we're going to give away that first Friday a autographed, signed, full-size print of the Gravedigger play with Jalen Milrow on the left side of the print with the throw. And then uh, Bond, who, of course, now unfortunately is at Texas, on the right side of the print with the catch. So I think that's what we got lined up, but it'll be a great gift. And we'll play Alabama football trivia next week. So next week, next Friday, we'll be kicking, but this Friday's kicking too. Uh, we got a great show on tap. I'm going to run it down for you here in just a second. First, though, I need to tell you, as always, this hour of the Gary Harris Show being brought to you by Alabama Credit Union, member-owned and not-for-profit. It's just a better way of banking. I encourage you to go to alabamacu.com to find out who we are at Alabama Credit Union because – At Alabama Credit Union, you discover the heart and soul of our member-owned credit union, empowering our members, enriching our community. Alabama Credit Union is more than just a financial institution. It's a member-owned community, deeply rooted in rich historical values. Our central focus is empowering members, driving us to positively impact the community through financial success. And boy, they do a great job of that. That's alabamacu.com, or you can get by and see them at one of their many locations around the state of Alabama. Alabama Credit Union loans for real life. Some rules and restrictions do apply. See if you're eligible for membership. Then join today and feel good about your money. There we go. And you'll put a little extra change in your pocket. All right. As I said, a good lineup for today. 930, the voice of the Crimson Tide, Chris Stewart, is going to be with us this morning. His first season as the voice of the Crimson Tide. I know he did the games a couple of years ago when Eli was out ill and then did the road games last year. But this year, he is the... Full-time voice of the Crimson Tide, of course, has been doing men's basketball and baseball for many years. He'll join us to preview the season as we're just eight days away. Then at 10 o'clock, it's uh, Larry Butler, Larry the Music Man from Atlanta, Georgia, talking uh, Southern Rock and More, a segment that's really uh, kind of gotten some traction. People are enjoying hearing us talk about the roots of all the great music here in Alabama and Georgia and Mississippi and Florida, all the great bands that have come out of here, particularly in the 60s and the 70s. We'll have our music segment, uh, The History of Southern Rock, at 10 o'clock with Larry the Music Man. Then at 10.30, it's the Auburn Report with Brett Pritchard as the Tigers, like Alabama, eight days away from their season opener against Alabama A&M at Jordan-Hare Stadium. Also, Kalen DeBoer met with the media yesterday following practice, and we're going to have some of his... Uh, Clips, uh, are, we've got that clipped up. We'll have some of his comments as well. And he was asked about the assertion by the Miami of Ohio head football coach 
that Alabama tampered with the Crimson Tide's new kicker, the former Miami of Ohio kicker. And that's uh, caused a little bit of a, you know, a stir, as you might imagine. But uh, Chuck Martin, the Miami of Ohio head coach, accused Alabama football of tampering with Graham Nicholson. Kalen DeBoer responded yesterday. Nicholson beat out Alabama's Will Riker last season for the Lou Groza Award, which goes to the nation's top place kicker. Coach DeBoer uh, appeared not to know much about it when he was asked about it. Uh, let's go ahead and get that clip ready to go. Uh, let's go ahead and play that since I've already teased it. Coach, you got it. Let me, give me a thumbs up when you got it, Chase. All right, here's Coach DeBoer responding to uh, a question about the allegation from Miami of Ohio head coach Chuck Martin. Before we get started, the uh, Miami of Ohio coach accused you guys of tampering with the recruitment of Graham Nicholson. Do you have a response to that? Uh, I don't know anything about that, I guess, that comment. Um, yeah, I mean, he entered the portal and we reached out to him. So uh, that's how it goes, right? So uh, we did everything the way you're supposed to. Yeah, that's how it goes. I mean, you go in the portal, you're, you're free game. Of course, what Miami's coach is saying that uh, Nicholson was not in the portal yet in Alabama contacted him. But that's, you know, that's a he said, she said kind of thing. And uh, I don't think there'll be much comes of that. Uh, just unusual for a head coach, though, to come out and say it like that. He was pretty bold and had a lot of bravado. We may find his clip, too, because he was being interviewed for, I guess, his coach's show or somebody there at the University of Miami, and I'll find that clip. Uh, you got it already ready, Chase? Or Chase is going to find it real quick. It's the clip from the Miami head coach and exactly what he had to say. I guess that's what kind of caused the stir. Listen to how almost uh, arrogant he is here. Here we go. We'll play it for you now. All right, special teams lost your kicker, Carter McLaughlin. He's said we didn't lose him. He's at Alabama. We know yeah, exactly. I understand we know exactly that. where I, he's at. Like, I, I, we, again, uh, you media people, it's all pretend. Like, no, Alabama stole our kicker. Uh, I, they yes, illegally, they, they illegally recruited Why our. Want to say it, they don't illegally you? recruited our kicker and stole him from us. And like, that's <laughs> that's a fact. But that's that's how. But we act like it's not. We live in this la la world. Like, hey, let's not oh, talk. Re- I don't know why Here everybody go. knows what's going on. So, yeah, Alabama stole our kicker. <laughs> Um, a couple, other, a right couple other schools try to steal it, but then they go, okay, what's the Let's question? Talk about- he said, that's a fact. Well, really, it's not a fact. It's an allegation. And the, you, you made an allegation. It's not it, just because you say it doesn't make it a fact. I mean, I don't know what happened, but it's, you know, you can't say that's a fact. I mean, you got some proof other than you saying that's a fact. But anyway, like I said, I don't think much will come of it, but it's, uh, um, just unusual for a head coach to come out and, and say something like that. So uh, we'll have more from Coach DeBoer, though, coming up later on in the show. As I said, high school football getting kicked off last night. And boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, um, we had some big-time games last night. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and try to um, tell you otherwise. I mean, it was it was it's week zero. It's the Thursday night before the big Friday night. But a lot of uh, a lot of great games last night. I've got some scores I'm going to run down for you right now. Uh, We'll start with games that were right here in our area. A big one in Tuscaloosa. Tuscaloosa Academy and American Christian Academy played a doozy over at TA. Uh, TA jumped out, and then ACA came back to lead 24-21. But then TA closed the game on a 17-0 run. And Tuscaloosa Academy beats American Christian Academy 38-24. Huge win for the Knights over the Patriots. Also, big rivalry up at Gordo last night. I'm not surprised, obviously, that Gordo won. I, I figured Gordo would beat Fayette County. But 62-12, to 12, that's kind of a shocker. Gordo 62, Fayette County 12. That one, uh, that one blows my mind. I'm not going to lie to you. Probably the game of the, of the night in the state was the Thompson Warriors at home in Alabaster hosting Grayson out of Georgia, two powerhouses, and a defensive game. Thompson's offense didn't do much all night. I mean, they didn't do hardly anything, but they hung in there. Uh, They were down 7 0, and they got a scoop and score on a fumble recovery by Anquan Fagans, the Auburn commit, to tie it at 7. Then down 14 7 late in the game. Um, they get a, an interception and um, get it tied up at 14. 
or I'm sorry, that they got the fumble recovery tied up at seven. I'm going back in my mind and trying to remember it. So they tied it up at seven, and that forced the overtime on the fumble recovery. Then they scored first in OT. You get the ball at the 10-yard line. They kicked the point to go up 14-7. to seven. Grayson scored and went for two on the road and got it. And Grayson wins 15-14. That's how it went. So the touchdown pass actually came in overtime. Uh, Trent Seaborn, the highly touted quarterback for Thompson, had a tough night against that Grayson defense, but he did throw the touchdown in overtime to give Thompson the lead. But Grayson wins at 15-14 in OT. Other scores last night, and yeah, Bob Jones over Coleman, 48-12. Pratt will beat Pike Road, 41-37. Shaw, Georgia over Smith Station, 15-6. Gadsden City beat Muscle Shoals. What a game here, 33-29. Parker over Ramsey, 41-12. Spanish Fort beat Fairhope, 42-6. Arab over Albertville, 35-0. Moody hosted Gainesville, Georgia. And head coach Josh Niblett, the former Hoover High head coach, and Gainesville wins that one, 31-7. Montevallo over Tarrant, 32-0. Priceful shutout Columbia, 68 zip. Springville over Asheville, 20 to 19. Corner beat Winfield here in West Alabama, 32 13. West uh, or White Plains over Talladega, 35 20. Carbon Hill over Curry up in Walker County, 20 to 14. Flomington over Clark County, 23 to 12. Geraldine top Sardis, 35 6. Oakman over Cordova, 20 to 6. Smith's uh, Southside Selma over Carver, Birmingham, 31 to 12. Isabella over Thorsby, 21-14. Spring Garden down Sand Rock, 41-7. And down in Montgomery in the kickoff classic, the AHSAA kickoff classic, it was T.R. Miller over Realtown, 28-7. So that's a check on our high school games from last night. Big schedule of games coming up tonight as well. And um, I'll run some of those down for you real quick that we're going to be watching here in West Alabama. Uh, Central's at Tuscaloosa County. That's our uh, football Friday WVA 23 game of the week. We've got Bibb County hosting Chilton County. Uh, Billings leads at Greensboro. East Central at North River Christian. Florence at Hillcrest. Hell County at Pickens Academy. Jacksonville Christian at Tuscaloosa Christian. Jasper at Brookwood. Lamar County at South Lamar. Fultondale hosts Linden. Demopolis hosts Mountain Brook. Northridge is at Calera. Percy Julian at Paul Bryant. Aliceville at home against Pickens County. R.C. Hatch is at Holt. Sipsy Valley at Green County. Morgan Academy hosts Southern Academy. Sullivan's at Marion County. Sumter Central at Choctaw County. Verbena at Holy Spirit. And West Blockton at Northside. That's our Friday night schedule from here in West Alabama. All right, it's 9.15. We're off and running. Ready to rock and roll this morning. Chris Stewart coming up at 9.30. We've got phone calls coming up in the next segment. Philip, will get to you on the other side of the break. This is the TGIF edition of the Gary Harris Show on Tide 100.9 FM and 1230 AM WTBC. Your home for Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. As much as industry has evolved, it will always be that place to escape and have a good time. Whether it's for a game day weekend, to reminisce on college days, or to create new memories, if you're looking for a good time, there's only one thing to do. Head to the free at 1925 University Boulevard. And don't forget about the Lucky Lunch Meet and 3 special. Critical legislation now. Message and data rates may apply. You may receive up to four messages a month, and you may text stop to stop. This message furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters. Since 2011, Billy's Sports Grill, located on Main Avenue in historic downtown Northport, has been serving their legendary signature chicken sandwich, award-winning wings, and handcrafted cocktails. Billy's is also the spot to watch all your favorite sporting events with big screen, high-definition televisions, both dining rooms, at the bar, and... Deal or text DEAL to 511-511. Text DEAL to 511-511 today. All dogs are unique. Your dog results can and will vary. Message and data rates may apply. Tide 100.9, Tuscaloosa weather. A good supply of sunshine today. Tuscaloosa's high around 90. Tonight, fair and pleasant, the low 65. Tomorrow's sunny with a high at 91. Hot and dry weather Sunday and Monday. The sky's sunny both days. Highs between 92 and 95 degrees. I'm James Spann on the ABC 3340 Weather Center on Tide 100.9. You're listening to The Gary Harris Show. Oh, wow. For Alabama sports. Tide 100.9. And streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. All right, 919. Welcome back into the Gary Harris Show, the TGIF edition. And we're going to jump out on the phone lines and uh, welcome in our pal, Philip. Good morning, Philip. 
Hey, Gary, I'm really looking forward to the high school show tonight, and that that ought to be a lot of fun. Um, one one guy that um, that Alabama's got right now that's, that's you're beginning to read his name a little bit, and it's sort of fascinating to me, uh, intriguing. I think he might be a a player X that we haven't been talking about a whole whole lot, but Rico Scott, his name is appearing now a little bit. Yeah, talented wide receiver and uh, out of Pennsylvania. You're right, it is. I th- I think that uh, <clears throat> he's going to be an interesting player. I think all of that, you know, that entire wide receiving core is interesting to me, Philip, and I'll tell you why, because I think there's some real talent there, but we don't really know what the rotation is going to be. We don't really know, you know, who the starters are going to be. Uh, I mean, we got to guess, but I think as a group, it's going to be interesting to see who comes out of that and who are the four or five guys that, you know, they really count on this season. So he could be one of them. You're right. He's been, uh, he's been trending in that direction. He has. And it's, it's sort of been all of a sudden, and it's that's really encouraging. That's got to be really encouraging to the coaches to know that they've got a guy that's, that's all of a sudden is is a factor X that, that uh, teams are going to have to account for. So I love the depth. I think it's going to be great, especially early in the season when these guys are running, you know, 50 yard routes in this in this 90 degree weather. We're going to have. You know, it sounds like nine guys that can stretch the field. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I think the, as I've said here, and you're obviously in agreement, I think this wide receiving core is going to wind up being a strength. I mean, I, I think there was a lot of concern um, when Bond went in the portal, and obviously you lose uh, Burton to the NFL, and and you look at the guys that were heavy contributors last year, and then you look going well, into this season, you said, well, they don't have many players that have experience at wide receiver, and Alabama doesn't. And uh, But there's a guy last year that I could just never figure out how they didn't get him the ball more, and that's Kendrick Law. <clears throat> and I think he's going to oh, be Oh, my a, gosh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I thought last yeah, that, year he should have been more crazy. prominently featured. You know, they did the little end around to him at Auburn, and he took it in for a touchdown. Unfortunately, he got called mm-hmm. back for what I thought was a dubious holding call. But, uh, but he's a well, guy. Obviously, Ryan Williams, and, and you mentioned mm-hmm. uh, Scott and uh, Emmanuel Henderson. I mean, it just goes mm-hmm. on and on. And Cole Adams. I mean, I think this one, mm-hmm. I think this wide receiving group is going to be potent. Hey, Gary, before I go, and I'm looking forward to Chris. Uh, have you heard anything on Daniel Hill? How his arms doing? No, I have not. I have not heard much about mm-hmm. Daniel in terms of of, mm-hmm. of the arm. Um, uh, I may ask Chris what he knows as far as the health yeah. of the team uh, going in, but uh, have not heard much about him. I think this year, in, in regardless, I mean, clearly he's a true freshman. Uh, he's kind of the fourth back. So I don't know, you know, how much time he's going to wind up, you know, getting this this season. But I do think that he'll get an opportunity. And listen, he is a he is a sledgehammer, man. I mean, I don't yeah. know if people realize that he's two hundred forty pounds. So he's going to give him a little yeah. bit of a different type of uh, different type of player back there in that backfield. Well, look, yeah. hey, I appreciate it. And if they can find out some of that stuff on. Um on Daniel, uh, Daniel, and a little bit more on Rico Scott. That'd be great to hear. Hey, also real quick, who's your pick for the uh, Florida State Georgia Tech game tomorrow over in Ireland? <clears throat> you know what, Gary? I wish I would have done it over. I don't. I don't ever take back my picks. I made my picks on on the, on the up, upcoming games Sunday. Um, I picked Florida State 30, 35 to twenty four, but I wish I could completely redo it, but I'm not. But I I went with FSU. I think Tech's going to be a handful. I think Brent Key is one of the top seven, six or seven coaches in the nation. They're a good team. They're not a pushover. He's got some players. They they gave Georgia hell last year for about three, around three quarters, and then Georgia took over. But they moved the ball on Georgia and played a pretty good game before the, before Georgia cleaned them up. But I think Tech can play with FSU. I think they can beat them. Yeah, I think it's going to be a competitive game, too. I'm right there with you. I I, I think this is going to be a fourth-quarter game. And uh, I still mm-hmm. think Florida State may, you know, wind up winning it. But, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a really fun football game. A good, You know, I think a lot of people are going to watch it, obviously, with uh, with the lead-in, with game day, with saving on game day, and then the early kick. And, you know, I think there will be a pretty big audience for that game, too. All right, thank you, Philip. Yes, Thanks, sir. All right, good to hear from you. Phone lines are still open. Pinnacle. Park at North River Hotline, hotline 205-342-9904, 205-342-9904. Yeah, that is by far the most interesting game over the weekend. We ran them down for you yesterday. There's really not much. And I wish that, honestly, um, 
I wish there were more games on the menu for this weekend. I, I really do. Um, just because if you're going to do a week zero and you're going to have some games, you know, go ahead and, and have enough of them that um, you get a little bit of juice. You know, you've got obviously Florida State and Georgia Tech over in Dublin, but outside of that, uh, you've got Montana State at New Mexico, as we talked about, SMU at Nevada, and then late game Delaware State at Hawaii. I, I assume Delaware State finally got out there. They had missed their flight initially to go out. Uh, did you see that, Chase? And they were stuck in the airport. I can't believe that. Oh, we. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and and now you got to, you know, you're all the way out there in Hawaii. I mean, that's a that that's a tough one. But um, I was hoping we would, you know, this week zero. Lineup. If you're going to have a week zero lineup, you know, I, I don't expect a full schedule, but give us give us eight or ten games. You know, now we do have a big schedule coming up next Thursday. So week one is going to start off with a boom because we're going to have a whole bunch of Thursday games, and some of them are good games. And then we're going to have a pretty good schedule of Friday games. And then obviously you get into Saturday and you got a full schedule, but it would have been nice maybe to have had on this week zero, um, maybe six or eight games instead of four, maybe have a, um, a Sunday game would have been nice because we got a Sunday game next week with um, USC and LSU. And then you got a Monday game next week too, with Boston college and Florida state as Florida state won't play until Monday <clears throat> because they're coming back from Ireland, but it would have been nice Maybe it would have had a Sunday night game this week, too, for week zero. I think that would have been pretty cool and would have been a little more TV inventory. But, you know, nobody asked me, so I'm okay with that as well. So we got – bottom line is we got some games this weekend, and football is back and still a couple of weeks away from the NFL. But uh, it's all kind of kind of closing in on us, and um, and I'm ready for it. You know, you get to that point where you've talked about it and covered practice and you've listened to – coaches and all of the things that go with that and then at, at some point you're just ready to play and uh, I know the players are but I think sportscasters fans too it's like let's get it here and the good thing about once we get through the weekend is just game week it's game week so we're not just talking about the season we're talking about a specific game we're having press conferences to talk about a specific game everybody's building toward the first weekend. So just one more weekend, really. And then we can kind of, uh, we can get down to serious business. So, uh, and of course, as I've said already, high school wise, we're already there. I mean, it's, uh, um, you know, we don't have to preview it anymore. It's here. We're playing games tonight with a full schedule of games. All right. It's nine twenty-eight here on the Gary Harris show. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, the voice of the Crimson Tide, Chris Stewart is going to join us to preview the season. His first year in the press box as the full-time play-by-play announcer for Alabama football. I know he's excited about that along with Tyler Watts, his color analyst. And we'll try to find out what's going on as far as the sideline reporting is concerned. Um, Damian Harris was named the sideline reporter, and then he already uh, decided to... House made queso, sweet vinaigrette dressing, and spicy Cajun sauce. And check out our breakfast catering menu. Who's Q and Brew is open seven days a week. We're located at 1825 McFarland Boulevard North in the Northridge Center. Are you receiving unemployment? Your benefits could be at risk. Here's how you can protect yourself and your benefits. Never respond to mail notifying you of a false claim in your name. Never answer a text message asking you to verify your account. And only respond to official Alabama Department of Labor social media pages. Report fraud at labor.alabama.gov slash fraud. Brought to you by $10. Shop these can't-miss deals before they're gone. Because Lowe's knows home improvement. Valid through 9-4. While supplies last, mulch offer excludes Alaska and Hawaii. A national championship team covering a national championship team. The best sports talk in the state. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. Everybody, welcome back into the Gary Harris Show, the TGIF edition. It's 931, 29 minutes in front of the hour of 10 o'clock. And a little yay, Alabama, to warm us up for the voice of the Crimson Tide. Chris Stewart is uh, joining us on the Pinnacle Park at North River Hotline to preview the upcoming season. Good morning, Chris. How are you? 
Gary, I'm great, buddy. How are you doing? Doing great. Well, this is your uh, – certainly you've been – you did the games two years ago when Eli was out ill. And uh, – <coughs> pardon me, you did the, the road games last year. But this is your first season uh, in the press box full-time as the voice of, of the Crimson Tide. And even though you've been doing this for a long, long time, you've been doing men's basketball and baseball and involved in the football uh, broadcast, is there a little something different? Or are there a few more butterflies knowing that you're taking over that position full-time? Gary, there's there's no more butterflies, but there's a lot more radio and TV requests yeah. that there have been. You know how that goes. Yeah. And look, it's uh, it's special. Please don't get me wrong. You're right, though. I've been around it. Uh, not having to introduce myself, I think, is a big thing. Or I should say, introduce myself to the to the Bama fans. Sure. There's some that that. Um, maybe still don't for whatever reason, but you know, that's, that's part of it too. And I'm, but it's not like I'm an outsider. I'm not in as I have so much respect now. Uh, and not that I didn't before, but I have really a lot of respect now for Paul Kennedy and the situation that he came into gosh, 40 years ago mm -hmm. when he followed John Forney, mm -hmm. he was about 29 years old. I think he was coming from Vanderbilt. Uh, he had no, to my knowledge, no connection to Alabama. And suddenly he's replacing the legend. And combining that with the death of Coach Bryant, Coach Perkins replacing the tower or taking the tower down, replacing Golden Flake and Coke with Frito-Lay and, and Pepsi. Uh, and John Forney with a 29-year-old from Vanderbilt. Uh, it was a... That, that was a lot of change right? that didn't go over very well, as you recall. Uh, at least, again, uh, although I know there's a lot of people disappointed that Eli's not still doing the games, and I understand and, and appreciate that. But at least they don't have to question who this new guy is, and I would uh, I'd be more than a little disappointed if they had to question whether or not I care about as much about the tide as they do because uh, I think that's been pretty evident for a long time. Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt about that. Plus, you've got Tyler Watts in the booth with you, and, and you've worked with him, obviously, doing Alabama games, but also going way, way back uh, with high school you know, football. So, um, yeah, not that you couldn't work with any analysts, but there's certainly, I know, a, a real comfort level with the two of you together. There is. You know, uh, he's heard me say it a thousand times, but it is the truth. Um, I, I did the TV play by play on local cable for Tyler's first start in high school. How about that? So I've known him since he was about 14 years old. And, uh, then to be a part of in, in some regard of the broadcast of his games and then, working with him, you know, I think it was right after he finished that he became part of the pay-per-view or not long after that, he started doing some of the pay-per-view broadcast with um, David Crane on play-by-play -play, and I was the sideline guy. So we, and then we've done, you know, we did replays back when ACN Sports and CSS were, um, uh, were in existence and we used to do the tape delays before the SEC network came into existence and that that went away but you're right we did high school football games for about 15 or 16 years together on channel 68 out of Birmingham and have just had a long uh friendship as well as the professional relationship and there that certainly adds to a comfort level I think for both of us yeah no doubt and and also I know you're getting this question a lot when you're doing the media uh, rounds, but uh, Damian Harris was announced as the sideline reporter replacing Christian Miller, and then he yeah. left <laughs> to pursue other opportunities. Of course, I know you've got a, a guy in Roger Hoover who's a pro and a great plug and uh, play guy there, but uh, do you have any insight on who might be on the sidelines uh, next Saturday night against Western Kentucky? Yeah, Gary, I think they'll be announcing that uh, very early next week, okay. uh, maybe even sooner. I don't know the the timeline. I think that's very close to being settled and uh man it was really cool to have uh 
some of the people reach out and show interest that did. And but I think the administration uh, is has come up with somebody that Bama fans are really going to enjoy a uh, familiar name to them and um, somebody that's that's going to have an awful lot of enthusiasm for that position. And we're excited about having him. And sorry, I can't say more than that right now, but it will be uh, it'll be a familiar name and, and that will be announced very soon. Oh, we'll look forward hated to that. that. Hey, yeah, and hated that Damian couldn't come on with us. He was he was uh, ready to do so and then, frankly, got a, a TV offer that he'll be announcing soon that uh, was just too good for him. And we certainly, I say we, Jim Carabin, my boss, and and um, who had worked with Damien on putting that together along uh, with Greg Byrne. But everybody certainly understood, you know, that that opportunity sure. was there for him because it was it, it's going to be a true career opportunity second career opportunity for him now that the playing days are over so certainly no hard feelings there yeah and you know you made a good hire when you uh, hire a guy who doesn't even get to the first game with you (laughs) You (laughs) you're exactly right (laughs) you know no doubt about it and uh you know christian i will say this christian miller's still very much a part of our crew but uh just was not able to uh from a travel standpoint uh be with us every weekend right now and then so fully understanding of that but really excited man that that christian's still with us and part of the network because not only a fantastic person but really really good it's been fun to watch and listen and i don't have to tell the listeners of your station that but he is um he's just gotten really really good and really enjoyed just being around him and working with him, but also uh, the job that he does. You know, we're, we're thankful we're still having part of it. Absolutely. The voice of the Crimson Tide, Chris Stewart with us. Let's talk a little football. We're eight days away. Yep. Uh, the season opener against Western Kentucky next uh, Saturday night. I guess that'll be the final game that it's just Bryant-Denny Stadium because on September 7th, uh, Saban Field, Nick Saban That's Field right. uh, at uh, Bryant-Denny Stadium is going to be dedicated. So we're counting down to that, too, for these first couple of games. But uh, a lot of change on the football side, obviously, after 17 years, Chris. Uh, Nick Saban is, is you know, in retirement or semi-retirement. He's actually over in Dublin, Ireland right now getting ready yeah. for, for sports uh, uh, for the uh, ESPN game day uh, telecast tomorrow morning. But from a football standpoint, you're you're doing your research. You're getting ready. I, I think uh, I have said on my show, and I, I'm going to throw this out at you, that, yeah, there will be some different things schematically and a different head coach and some different coaches. But I think it's going to – Alabama football is going to look a lot – under Kalen DeBoer, like it did under Nick Saban, from the standpoint, there's going to be a lot of big, strong, fast, talented athletes out there on the football field. And with that, Gary, a lot of winning. Exactly. Uh, and, and that's the uh, the bottom line. Are there differences? Yes. But here's the biggest similarity that I've seen. Both of those men clearly do it their way. And one of the things, I was with Coach DeBoer last night on, on something uh, that he was – he was doing with red elephants and said, um, it, you know, he loves the fact that coach Saban is still around, but coach is busy. And, and one of the things I respect so much about coach Saban among a million other things is that he has clearly made himself available to this staff and this program in any way that he can. But he, you and I've seen this Gary, Coaches far less successful than him who just can't walk away from it and want to be, you know, want to have their hand in it and they meddle. And they're always looking over the shoulder. And basically it creates a problem in your program. Nick Saban's made it clear. I'm here and I want to help anytime or any way I can, but I am not going to be in your way. I'm not going to be standing over there second guessing everything you're doing and and uh saying well when you know one of those deals where when i was here this is what we did he there's none of that because that's not going to help alabama um we're we're fortunate that we've got a guy for all the differences the thing that i think is most similar about them is that they do it their way Mm -hmm. and for both of them their way has worked for them how many guys have you seen, Gary, in the last few years 
that have been a part of Nick Saban's staff, gotten a head coaching job, tried to do it like Nick Saban, and failed miserably. That doesn't mean they're bad coaches. But if you try and do what Nick Saban has done the way Nick Saban has done, and that's not who you are, you're not gonna you're not gonna succeed or have results that's right. that are similar. Uh, Kalen DeBoer should not change. That doesn't mean you don't constantly learn. Nick Saban did that. You saw it all the time. Whenever he have those speakers come in, he sat on the front row with a notebook in hand, uh, taking notes. He's he's constantly learning. Coach DeBoer talks the same thing about being a lifelong learner and try to get better but in terms of what you believe in in who you are what you do and the manner in which you do it you got to be true to that and why would Kalen DeBoer not it's worked everywhere he's been he's been he has won everywhere he's been so I'm I'm extremely excited that that's the man who uh Greg Byrne gave the opportunity to um to follow the the greatest coach of this era. Yeah, I like what Coach DeBoer says. Winners win. That's what they do. I, and something that you said that I've used here on the on my show, I think it was last week on Hey Coach. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I know I heard you say it somewhere. And you were talking about Coach DeBoer, and you might have been visiting with Greg Byrne. I'm, I can't remember the details. I just remember the statement. And you said he is so confident in his ability and what he does as a football coach, but at the same time, very humble. And that has yeah. been my impression too, Chris. I, I I think the takeaway I've gotten, and I have used this many times, that I've never seen a better combination of self-confidence and humility in somebody in that position. Because he is, he is sure of what he wants done, but there's no pretense or arrogance to him you know there are guys that you know that always act like oh i've got it figured out i've got it all figured out and i gotta tell you you can believe in what you're doing but if you think you've got it all figured out all the time you ain't got it figured out any of the time and it is it's exciting as someone who loves and cares about alabama the way i do um but it's also really cool to see that uh, a guy who carries himself and there is no pretense. I've had people say, man, he seems great. What's he like? I said, what you see is what you get. That's what, that's what I've dealt with really since spring ended because, you know, I met him the day that he was introduced. Uh, I didn't see him again or talk to coach DeBoer again until the night of the Tennessee Alabama basketball game at, in Tuscaloosa. Um, and then I didn't get to be around him again until a day because thankfully I was pretty busy with basketball for a long time. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but since a day ended, since the spring ended, uh, I've, I've had the privilege of working with him a lot, going to speaking events, whether it was, uh, Crimson Tide Foundation, Red Elephants, um, uh, Yay Alabama, uh, alumni events. We've done a lot of stuff together, which has been great for me in getting to know him and for him to get to know me in, in, in working in the role that I have. So uh, just uh, a very, very real person. I've said this, and I'll I'll finish this part of it with this, Gary. Um, <laughs> I say it with the utmost respect towards both men, okay? And I think you will, you of all people, will understand where I'm going with this. Um, Kalen DeBoer is a normal human being, and now that he's retired, so too is Nick Day. <laughs> But but it took retirement for Coach to get there, and I think even he understands that. Yeah. I think he recognizes it. Absolutely. But, uh, but but Coach DeBoer, while extremely focused, incredibly successful, uh, is just he's he's a steady ship. There's there's not a lot of. I'm sure it's there, 
and could be there if if the situation calls for it. But you don't see the the, vol- the volatility. You know, you you experienced it like every uh, everybody else in the media. I, I said for years that people watched Nick Saban's press conferences the way a certain percentage of the NASCAR fan base watched races. They were waiting and watching because they wanted to see the big one. No doubt about it. And the big one really didn't occur that often it with didn't. Nick Saban. But when it did, it was legendary. Uh, a lot more in the first 12, 13 years of, of his tenure in Tuscaloosa than, than the end of it. But uh, it, was, it was entertaining nonetheless, as long as you're not behind the wheel when the big one occurs. That's right. <laughs> but I'm, I'm not sure that you're going to see the big one very often in public, uh, if ever. From Kalen DeBoer, I just think it's a it's a different personality. It's who he is, and it has proven to be successful thus far everywhere he's been. And extremely hopeful that is going to continue to be the case in Tuscaloosa. Yeah, well said. Yeah, well, Saban, you uh, you you enjoyed the big one unless you were the one he was putting into the wall. <laughs> it wasn't, <laughs> and it wasn't so much fun if you were on the receiving end. Hey, I want to ask you about Jalen Milrow because I think a, yes, sir. You know, it's easy to forget that he's the highest returning Heisman voter or vote getter. He was finished sixth last yeah. year, and and it was a work in progress with him. But now you look at where he's at, and you look at this coaching staff with DeBoer and Nick Sheridan and what they've done with quarterbacks, Michael Penix last year, and the excitement level, I think, is off the roof for Jalen Milrow and what he can accomplish yeah. in this offense, not just for his team, but for himself. I mean, I think he's a legitimate Heisman candidate. I think he'll be in New York City. You've been getting ready for the season, watching, I'm sure, tons of video of him from last year, the way he evolved. What's your expectation? Because I can, you're not a coach, so I can ask you, what is your expectation yeah. for Jalen Milrow this season? I think he's just going to, he's already shown it, but I think he's going to be even better than he was last year because the the instincts of, of being able to do things and make a play when a play is not there or it's covered are still there. But the ability to read and find things and the accuracy have just improved the leadership skill, the comfortability that he has now as opposed to 12 months ago is through the roof. Um, You know, please understand uh, very different type players. And I don't get many things right. Gary, but I got this one right last year when he struggled and lost his starting job. I said, I've just got a feeling that he may be um, this year's Jake Coker. Wow. In that, as you recall, Jake, you know, had high expectations, um, didn't win the job his first year in Tuscaloosa, had it, lost it mm-hmm. his senior year, and then got it back, and there was no doubt after a game or two with of him getting back there. I think it only took him running over one DB in Athens, Georgia, on a rainy day for people to realize that's our quarterback. Whatever we're going to be, that's our quarterback. And it was the exact same thing, I believe, walking out of Bryant-Denny after the Ole Miss game last year. Whatever this team's going to be, it's going to be that with Jalen Milrow as the quarterback. And I'm just happy for him. Great young man. A lot of fun to be around and has worked incredibly hard and thrilled that he's had the success he has and hope that it continues in this now his uh, likely final year in Tuscaloosa. Can't wait. All right, uh, we're up against the clock, but I do want to ask you one basketball question because you did get to call um, Alabama's first ever trip to the Final Four. There had been some teams that were good Mm -hmm. enough to get there and just didn't make it, but this one probably on paper was not one of the better teams that even Nate Oates has had, but they got hot at the right time. They made it all the way. Memorable run, and now on October 11th inside Coleman Coliseum, we're going to celebrate that with the unveiling of the Final Four banner. Just your experience covering that team, and of course, obviously looking ahead to another great season, and and the chance to finally raise that banner inside Coleman Coliseum. Yeah, how special is that to uh, 
And I, I think the epitome of that for me is many great players as there were on that team. Uh, Aaron Estrada, who, you know, was conference player of the year back to back years, but he said, you know, the reason I came to Tuscaloosa is the fact that I wanted to play in the NCAA tournament. And he doesn't just get to play in the tournament, he gets to play in the Final Four. That's right. Uh, just so happy for him and what that team accomplished. Um, I will always believe that if uh, Latrell Reitzel had been healthy, then they win the regular season and and have more success in the conference tournament. But as it turned out, that may have been a blessing that he wasn't because they were – they were motivated, motivated, and refreshed, and ready to go into the uh, the NCAA without him. Or excuse me, they were go, able to go into the NCAA uh, refreshed and with a new challenge. And sure, they got some breaks with maybe a game or two or a matchup or two, but they earned what they got. And just happy for them that that those guys were. Um, able to accomplish what they did, make history, provide a memorable, forever memorable experience. And I think this next year, you know, you never know where you're going to finish, but this team may be the first ever to be a preseason number one in school history. And I'll be really surprised if they're not there in the mix to, uh, to go into March as one of the favorites to win the whole thing. Chris, I've enjoyed it, man. Same here, Gary. Appreciate you, man. Always good to talk to you. All right, we'll be listening to you well, all week, but particularly next Saturday night. Thanks a lot. Thanks, buddy. All right, Chris Stewart, voice of the Crimson Tide. When you buy a select tool at the Home Depot, how doers get more done? Limit one per transaction, exclusions apply, full eligible tool list in store and online. Life doesn't wait for when your finances are in perfect order. It just happens. But no matter what surprises come your way, Alabama Credit Union will be here to help make it affordable with great personal loans, mortgages, and auto loans. They offer an easy application process and fast decisions so you can stay focused on feeling good about whatever life brings your way. Alabama Credit Union will be here to help make it affordable with great personal loans, mortgages, Remember M for money and Mezrano. If it has a logo on it, call me, 205-800-8000. Tide 100.9, Tuscaloosa weather. A good supply of sunshine today. Tuscaloosa's high around 90. Tonight, fair and pleasant, the low 65. Tomorrow's sunny with a high at 91. Hot and dry weather Sunday and Monday. The sky's sunny both days. Highs between 92 and 95 degrees. I'm James Spann on the ABC 3340 Weather Center on Tide 100.9. Covering University of Alabama sports, as well as the national and local scene as well. The Gary Harris Show, only on Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. All right, hour number one, winding it down. Before we do close it out, though, I want to continue to remind you the YMCA of Tuscaloosa is ready for you. The Y is ready when you're ready for the Y. And through September 30th, no joining fee. That's right. All you have to do is just get over there and sign up and become a part of the Y. Also, through September 30th, training packages, personal training packages, duo or single, 10% off any personal training packages. All the personal trainers at the Y are certified, and they will help you get over the hump. Man, the YMCA is gearing up for fall. Why don't you gear up with them? Become a member of the Y today. All right, this hour of the Gary Harris Show has been brought to you by Alabama Credit Union, member-owned and not-for-profit. It's just a better way of banking. Find out more at alabamacu.com. Hour number two of the TGIF edition is on the way. We're going to kick it off with Larry the Music Man. You keep it dialed in right here at Tide 100.9 FM and 1230 AM WTBC. Tuscaloosa's Old Colony Golf Course is an 18-hole championship layout designed by 1976 U.S. Open champion Jerry Pate. Director of Golf John Gray and fitting specialist Bob Montgomery are PGA certified. Mike Shivitz is the head professional and director of the Tuscaloosa Junior Golf Program. Call today to secure a tee time at the Tuscaloosa Championship Golf Course. Everyone can play. 205-562-3201. 
Old Colony is operated by Perry. Serving part-time in the Army National Guard has led to a lot of firsts for me. It paid for me to be the first person in my family to go to school. That education got me to the first day at my dream job, which I can still hold while I serve part-time. That job and the home loan benefits I got from the Army National Guard helped me buy my first house. I all deal or text deal to 511-511. Your order is back with a 90-day guarantee. All dogs are unique. Your dog results can and will vary. Message and data rates may apply. The Alabama Securities Commission protects you from financial fraud. Anyone asking you for investment money must be licensed. You're careful with your money. Fraudsters aren't. Before you invest, call our hotline at 1-800-222-1253 to verify the licensing of the person making an offer and the product. Don't awesome. Taylor Electrical sounds really customer friendly. How can I get in touch with y'all? Just call or text us at 205-553-0958. It's electric. WTBC Tuscaloosa and W265CG Tuscaloosa, a town square media station. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. From the Fox Sports Studios in Los Angeles. Here's Monsi Bolaños. In Major League Baseball, the New York Mets are doing everything they can to keep their season alive. Bouncy ball up the middle and through. Base hit going into center. McNeil is in. Taylor coming home. No throw to the plate. Lindor gets the second. Mark Vientos, two-run bouncing ball up the middle. A two-run single makes it 5-1. Huge insurance and the ninth for the Mets. You heard it all on the Mets radio network, who defeated the Padres 8-3, while the Braves edged the Phillies 3-2, meaning Atlanta remains one and a half games up on New York for the final wildcard spot in the National League. And it was all Astros against the Orioles. They shut them out 6-0. Baltimore is now one and a half games back of the Yankees for the top spot in the AL East. The second round at the BMW Championship continues, and now there is a three-way tie at the top of the leaderboard. Alex Noren, Adam Scott, and Keegan Bradley are all six under par overall. Now, this hour's West Alabama real-time news update from the Tuscaloosa Thread Newsroom. Police are investigating after an unidentified body was discovered decomposing behind a shopping center in Northport Wednesday. Mayor Walt Maddox has given his 2025 budget recommendations to the city council. They include higher water bills, raises for all city employees, and the creation of an unprecedented drone first response team. Finally, the demolition of the downtown Tuscaloosa News Building is likely to begin in October to make way for the Saban Center. For the details on these stories and more, get connected at TuscaloosaThread.com. Get 24-7 local news coverage and sports updates when you download the free Tuscaloosa Thread app and sign up for twice-daily email newsletters. The Gary Harris Show. You see him host Tider Insider TV, Crimson Tide Kickoff, play-by-play for Alabama sports, and sports director for WVUA 23. It's time for the Gary Harris Show on your home for Alabama sports. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. All right, here we go. Hour number two of the Gary Harris Show right here on Tide 100.9 FM and 1230 AM WTBC. It's the TGIF edition for Friday August 23, 2024, Gary Harris, Chase Brumfeld with you for another hour. We're going to kick it off by jumping out on the Pinnacle Park at North River Hotline and welcoming in Larry Butler. Larry, the music man from Atlanta, Georgia. We kind of stumbled into this segment a few weeks ago with all the music that I talk and uh, has gotten great feedback. And so we're talking a little uh, Southern rock and more every Friday here on the show. If you want to join the conversation, Larry's told me he'd love to hear from you. We've gotten some good feedback. 205-342-9904, 205-342-9904. 205-342-9904, 205-342-9904. Good morning, Larry. What's going on, buddy? Good morning, Gary. Man, I'm loving this weather. Oh, man, it's gonna it's 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 fool's gold though. You know, it's been so yeah, nice I and I wanted to stay this way and early next week, I don't know in Atlanta, but they're 99 for highs early in the week. So, but boy, it has been well, nice. It we'll take it as it's here and enjoy it, but uh Gary, I want to I've, since we've been doing this show, I, I don't fact check anything. I go by my memory. Sometimes I forget a band member's name or sure. at a particular time. Well, I wanted to go back into the Alabama music scene as I was playing in 1970, and I'm hoping I can jog some memories because I need a little help on some of these places that I played. Uh, I, I want to start with Fort Rucker. We were we were a regular. I understand they changed the name, but uh, we were a regular there. 
and Ozark, Alabama. It was an Ozark Teen Club. Also, we played Montgomery, uh, a teen club there. I can't. That's the one I'm foggy on. And Dothan, a teen I club in that, Mon- a teen club in Montgomery from the early '70s is the one you're trying to think of. It would have been 1970, to be precise, because okay. I'm gonna have to tell a story that goes with that. But in the other one, it seems like Dothan was a National Guard armory. Back in that period, dances were held in armories. I think oh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, well, I, I I remember that. Yeah, I remember. Well, you the remember armory that? Dances. I remember. Uh, I'm old enough to remember the armory dances. Yes, sir. That was, that's what I'm hoping I can jog some memories. But I've got a story. We had played at that team center in Montgomery. And uh, we always tried to find, after the gig, you know, we loaded up, and you're talking about in the wee hours of the morning. Right. And we always tried to find a mom-and-pop truck stop with a restaurant. Mm-hmm. You know, where we could stretch our legs right. and, and and take a sack or something, whatever we could get at that time, a hamburger or whatever, but uh, for the ride. So we're we're getting gas, and our keyboard player then did most of the driving because he was raised on a farm. <laughs> and I'm only 17. There ain't no way I'm going to pull a U-Haul trailer and a big van, you know, on the road So at that particular time. And so we're getting gas, and we're getting out and stretching our legs. And I, it was a mom-and-pop truck stop. I don't remember the name. And this big van pulls up, pulling a a custom trailer, customized trailer for them. And a lot, you know, a lot of the bands had them. We had a U-Haul truck. So uh, they pull up in the next lane to get gas. And uh, the guy, black guy gets out. And, uh, you know, we're Southern country boys. And he, our keyboard player said, where'd y'all, y'all play tonight? Where'd y'all play? And, he said, uh, we're coming back from Atlanta. I'm not in the band. The band to sleep on the bus. And uh, th- this didn't hit at home at this big time. This is 1970. You didn't know who it was yet. And so he said, where are you? Uh, where are y'all headed home? He said, Tuskegee. Oh. And, uh, well, you know where we're going with yeah, this. Yeah, I got a feeling that. Well, on the side of the trailer, it was a Commodore's. I'll be dang. And I'll never, and I haven't even, my love, the love of my life, she's at work, she's listening to the show, and I have never told her the story because sometimes it just, I forget stuff, and I'll say, have I ever told you about this? And she'll say no, but I'll never forget that. Well, it didn't mean nothing. He said, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. you know, it was, there must have been eight or nine on the bus. It was one of them, it was like a basket. Remember the old junior colleges back then they had them long buses they carried the basketball team I do <laughs> you know yeah. you know and uh so in 1971 they opened for michael jackson in new uh new york the jackson five and barry gordy hears them and they get a contract with motown and i'll never forget that the first time i heard say long and that was her big hit in the mid to seventies to late seventies, and then every time I hear that song, I think of them. I said, "God, that was well, what." See, a- that's that's the kind of stories that we love because that's a story of being on the road and 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 you wind up interacting with with a guy that's with a band that at the time, you know, like you said, you're oh, that's cool, and then a couple years later, you're like, "My gosh, the Commodores!" I mean, they blew. Well, up it by, was like by seventy five. I said, "Boy, they, they were, must be a lot of members in that band." Yeah. <laughs> And, and you know, we were talking about it. We're for peace, you know. And yeah. uh, so that just, I, and that came to me, and I know she's listening, and she'll say, well, you never told me that. Well, it just came to me this week. I'd heard Ceylon on the porch drinking coffee. What a song. One yeah. morning. It wasn't so nice. But anyway, that brings back fond memories of those shows in Alabama and Dothan and Montgomery. Well, somebody's listening if you think of the teen center in Montgomery, because I know Montgomery is another, of course, the whole state, but Montgomery is another one of those great music towns, underappreciated music towns in this country, because obviously you think of Tommy Shaw, but there's been some some great music come out of Montgomery, Alabama. Well, I think people forget that gum. I mean, far as notoriety, you would have to say the Commodores is probably the biggest one of the biggest, if not, for what they did in record sales and oh, worldwide. I mean, they're to come out of, yeah. you know, Tuskegee, Alabama. The thing about the Commodores, Larry, and you're right, is that they, 
you know, you think of them in Motown, you think of the horns, you think of the, you know, in the 70s, the soulful sounds, but those, they were true to their Alabama roots too. I mean, that had a, I mean, they had, I mean, a great groove, obviously, and, 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 but there was a, how do I say this? And you, you're you the musician here, but there was a, 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 a roots, you know, a, a true to their roots type of sound there. They, I mean, they, they were proud to be from Tuskegee and, um, that was a grassroots type of music. You know, it was, it was, it was still a little bit different, I think, than traditional Motown. Would you agree with that? Oh, it, very definitely. Uh, they had a, like Ceylon almost has a country feel to it. It's a real rootsy. Uh, that was one of my favorite songs. Ceylon down the line. You know how Lionel phrased it a little bit, mm-hmm. a little country pointing to mm-hmm. it. But uh, I was just wondering who might be listening and actually may have seen them play in a club or a local dance or something, you know, because they had to, they didn't start out. They were formed in 68, so they were on the road for a while. That's right. Making yeah. it. Uh, but yeah, anyway, um, most of these overnight success stories didn't happen overnight. <laughs> no, no, no. You see, you see them go from nothing to something overnight, but usually there were several years of, of hard work that went into becoming an overnight success. I know how that goes. That's for sure. Well, my band, we were called the Beethovens, and we worked our butts off. We were young and had the energy, and we were booked. And I want to say we were booked exclusively on military bases. Uh, and I'm proud of that because uh, so that was the Vietnam. The that was Vietnam in this. The heat of Vietnam was going on, you know, yeah. the, the war. And uh, it wasn't always easy to have long hair back then and be different. Yeah, I imagine. When well, you were playing with Beethoven, we, uh, so y'all were playing regularly. Y'all were y'all were constantly on the road playing gigs. Yeah, I was 17 years old, and uh, our first gig was at Fort Stewart. And uh, then we were what it was, but you know we talked about uh, uh, Rick Hall and uh, that connection, and then the Atlanta connection. Bill Lowry, you know, was a big promoter, and we looked up. He was a book. He booked all the Atlanta bands. The the we called them the big boys up there: Joe South, Billy Joe Royal. Bobby Goldsboro, he had a stable of bands and acts, and uh, he put us on the military circuit. And that's, uh, we made the most money playing military bases, that's no lie. We would go in on a Friday night and play the EM Club, and then Saturday night we would play more country music for the NCO, the, you know, the officers. Hmm. And, you know, Vietnam's raging, man. I, I mean, this is like, we're entertaining these people, and... Uh, I felt real, you know, I, I missed the war by a lottery number when Nixon did the lottery, but I felt proud, and my son's been in the Army for 14 years, and I'm pro-military. I felt proud to be doing that, you know what I mean? Right. And I'm, But the Atlanta scene, man, that was, you know, we talked about that, how strong that was, and this is going on while Dwayne Almond and the Almond Brothers or forging their way, they'd already gone to Macon, and then we're going up to Piedmont Park and playing free on Sundays. And it had gotten so big, uh, they shut it down. There was, instead of hundreds, there were thousands that would come hear this band with two guitars and, you know, two drummers, and one was black. And it was like, man, you know, this is something different. And, uh, but the Atlanta scene moved. There was about five or six bands that really should have made it. You know, that mm-hmm. movie Almost Famous, they just got to that point. Mm-hmm. And they did, because of the Almond Brothers were so strong, they took all the Capricorn glory, you know, to after Dwayne passed. And then Marshall Tucker came in and took slack up. Mm-hmm. Remember, I told you that story last week about our manager. He was a DJ, and he said, this is going to be the next big thing in Southern Rock, and he was right. Marshall Tucker Band took up a big, uh, uh, took up a lot of space that was empty when Dwayne died. So, Larry, let's get, uh, because you sent me some some great picks this week, and... and uh, I've got some more. I got, uh, I'm going to talk about Capricorn Records. Yeah, any, uh, my phone, I'm fixing to change phones. Mm-hmm. Uh, my phone is so overloaded with stuff. It's real slow, and it's not doing the job, so I, I'm, am I, 
you know, I'm going to get better with that. I can send a lot of stuff easier at one time. So. Well, you sent me, and I, and I was I was fascinated by, you know, everybody that's kind of, you know, kind of bought into this as far as the, the music scene in the South coming up in the 60s and 70s. But the picture that you sent with Butch Truck's drum set um, was cool. And then, of course, you, the, the, the all the album covers. But the fact that you kind of, and you and some other folks have, have put together this tribute to the Allman Brothers there in Macon is really um, fascinating with the Capricorn Records and the just just all the things. Discuss that, and then we got a phone call we're going to get okay, to Okay, well, you I, I encourage people to come to Macon. I know it's football season, and believe me, it's hard for me. We go up at the end of September that, to honor, you know, to remember Dwayne Allman. And then Gabba Fest has grown into the hundreds and hundreds of people that come every year for that. It's four days of music. But Capricorn, that, that, that photo I sent you, you know, Capricorn set empty and gutted out for years. You know, it just sat there and it was falling apart. And this con, this, uh, in, uh, contractor somehow affiliated with Mercer. I don't know all that story, the details of it, but Mercer bought that and got a grant for it and he restored that that studio by pick photos from the past and restored it just the way it was and when you walk in the foyer to the studio there's a wall of, of albums hundreds of groups that recorded there i mean you can just on and on uh, of course the Almond brothers marshall turkle wet willie just you know all of Phil Walden's bands, you know, had a chance to record there, but it's, it was a great job for what he did. And you can actually, there's a little bar there. You can have a drink. And if there's a band recording, you can, you can sit in and, and, and monitor that. And then there's a big museum room, yeah. or like a museum of nothing but artifacts from that era that's being collected. And well, put on this display. Like, yeah, all, it, it's really amazing. Albums. Yeah, the, the album cover is just incredible. I mean, some of the names here and just, I mean, it, it it's an unbelievable thing. All right, hey, we're going to take a phone call. Uh, Larry, uh, Mike has got uh, something for you here. Oh no, I cut, I cut Larry off. I did that. I kind of, I'm going to have to let you start taking that through. Uh, call, we're going to call Larry right back. Uh, hold on, Mike. Hey, Mike. Good morning. Hey, hey, Gary. Hey, good. Good to have you on. Hey, listen, we're going to get Larry back up. I cut him off when I tried to right. add you on, so uh, Chase I, is getting I was, back up. Yeah, I was calling because I grew up in Montgomery, and I might know the team club he was talking about. Okay, good. Good. Well, we're going to get him right back on. I'm going to leave uh, I'm gonna leave the button pushing, pushing to Chase, so get a, hey, Chase, when you get Larry up, go ahead and get Larry back on and Mike on before I cut somebody else off. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, hold tight, Mike. We're gonna get this thing figured out. I, uh, hey, Gary. Yeah, man. You know me, but I don't want to tell you my full name. But from the Y. Yeah, yeah, I recognize your voice already. Okay. Yeah, man. Yeah, I know exactly, not exactly who you are. We're gonna get Larry back up for you here in just a second. Now we lost Mike. Uh, we're well gone. Okay. <laughs> hey, Larry. We're we're having. All right, Mike's calling back in. We're gonna try to get this figured. When I went to punch Mike up. He's because he say, thinks he knows the teen club in Montgomery. He's from Montgomery, and somehow I I knocked you off, and now That's all okay. right, all hey. right. Listen, Mike, we got you and Larry. Mike, you're yeah. on, you're on with Larry, buddy. We got this thing. I'm listen. I'm the talent, if you want to call me that. I'm certainly not the technical guy. Hey, all right, Mike, we got you back up with Larry. Hey, Larry, I appreciate what you're doing on that show. It's very interesting. I I grew up in Montgomery, Larry, on the east side of town. I had a little hack band for a while, and we played one gig that we got. Well, we actually did an audition, and then we were going to get paid. But uh, our band broke up because the singer was a butthole, and we fell apart, and then it's time to go to college. But uh, we, that gig was at a place called Gunner Teen Town, Gunner Air Force Base. When you said that you played at military places, uh, I was thinking that that might be the one you were talking about in Montgomery. That's got to be it. I think you're right, bud. Uh, 
man, I'm getting cold. I'm shivering because that, that, that's it. I mean, and you actually got to play there. Well, yeah, we, we never got paid for a gig. It wasn't really a band. I mean, it was, this was back a few years, like in the 67 or so, 66, 67, maybe. Yeah. Cause I went to the university in 68, but, uh, uh, yeah, we went down there and auditioned, and uh, we were going to get paid for play. We had played at birthday parties yeah. and things like that. Of course. But um, but we never did get to come back and well, what, play. Why didn't play you get to come back and do a gig, Mike? What happened? Our singer was a real butthole. Oh, yeah, you said, well, that, the, hey, those, we singer, actually, those singers, Larry, actually, they'll get you every time, won't they? Uh, you better believe it. No, don't let me get into that. <laughs> We almost got into a fight while we were playing there. Oh, and he, he basically walked off, and so we finished doing some instrumentals. Well, he had the right so attitude then, to be a lead singer. <laughs> you know, Gary, back then, every band had a lead singer. He didn't do nothing but sing. That was wrong. If you think about well, it, all the good. group from the late 60s yeah. and early 70s, their, lead, their front man just sang. <laughs> Stood with a mic in his hand. Or, uh, yeah. Just, yeah, no, yeah. No, 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 no instrument. You're right. That's just the way it was. That's right. You're right. The and even, man, and the even, the ones that, even the ones that could play a little bit didn't much, did they, Larry? They just, they no, had to, it was all, it was all marketing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Mike. The sad uh, thing about it. Go ahead. I'm sorry. The sad thing about it is he could only sing one song. <laughs> one that was good. <laughs> Okay. Well, that's still an interesting story. Nate, give us the name of the club again. It was Gunner Teen Town. Gunner Teen Town. Gunner Air Force Base. Yeah, Gunner Air Force Base. You're so right, my friend. Well, my man. All right. Go ahead, Larry. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say one of the the, the Ozark Alabama Teen Club was real hot because the Candyman were all the Alabama bands, Mm -hmm. James King, the Candyman. Strange bedfellows. They all were playing there, man. That was a hot little town right there. Awesome. Teen clubs well, or something of the past, and it's a oh, shame. Oh, I you know. know. Miss them. Yeah. Miss them. Miss them a lot, man. I, I, I'm, I'm old enough to. I got a little taste of that. Whether you call it a teen club or not. Um, in the mid seventies, when I was old enough, 12, 13, 14, 15, to start going to those things, uh, the armory dances, the, the, you oh, know, my Lord. yeah, that, that, I we got a taste more of that. armories than anything. Yeah, probably. I got a taste yeah. of that myself, man. And it was, that's just a piece of Americana that's gone. Hey, Mike, thank you so much, my friend. Hey, Gary, yeah. Gary, just one thing. I, I just wanted to tell you, you and Larry both, how I really appreciate hearing Larry because, uh, especially, you know, talking about the music from this, part of the country like you are filling us in on that's like um it's like watching a documentary on tv <laughs> so i appreciate it well that's what we're shooting for yes, sir. mike hopefully i'll see you over to y soon okay all right buddy. thank you all right uh larry uh let's go ahead because uh, i'll just i'll catch up on these breaks go ahead i'm gonna let chase punch time through because i'll know i'll cut him off all right tom you there Hey, Gary. Yeah, I don't good need, morning, I don't need to be punch. I don't need to be punching any buttons. All right, you're on with Larry the Music Man. Tom, good morning. Tom, a man. Tom, a man. Yeah, buddy, Larry. I love this part of the show. Look forward to it every week. Uh, this week, though, I've got a question, not a not a story, but uh, you know, uh, in 1972, can I take you back to that? Sure. Okay, there was uh. I, Left as soon as school let out, we we took off to the Gulf Coast and started out down there before it was anything ever developed at Gulf Shores. It was too slow for us there, so we ended up over in uh, uh, Biloxi and Gautier, Mississippi, and all like that. It was a club over there called Johnny's Smokehouse. Are you familiar with the Smokehouse days? I, I Let am. me tell you something, Larry. Do you remember all the bands that guy used to bring into there? It was unreal because we played, and, and you may help me on that, this, we also played a military base there. Yeah. What was that base? Yeah, Do you I, remember? I, I'm not going to get it, it, it right was, now. It's at Biloxi, and right, it's, right. The base where they, it's the base where they fly out to check hurricanes. I can't there remember the name of it. But uh, yeah, it, it. But Johnny Smokehouse, I'm telling you, 
Uh, he had these bands that they just toured the Gulf Coast. They started in New Orleans, and they would go all the way around, you know, the Gulf Coast. But it was some bands that stopped in there. I mean, and it was a rocking place. You couldn't stir them with a stick. And the reason why, Larry, you remember, in Alabama, Mobile, you had to be 21 to drink a beer. That's right. And over the, in, in Mississippi, it was 18. And, oh, my God, all those kids from Mobile – and South Mississippi flocked into that place. And I didn't know if you remember the Smokehouse days or not, but they were some good ones, wasn't they? Yes, sir. And I'm going to tell you, those places like that, are far, they're gone. That's why I like yeah. to do this. People don't realize, and, and I hate to say, you know, we're older and wiser, but they don't have what we had then. That's correct. This, this young, these people, these kids now... They don't have anything close to what was going on then in the in the mid. No, they don't. Late sixties to the early seventies, even to the end of the seventies, that was just something that'll never come back. And that's why I want to keep it alive. I think that was the whole thing about the shows to try to rekindle memories and uh, you know keep it alive. Well, we're doing uh, it. Hey, Tom, was it Keesler Air Force Base that you were talking about? Yeah, I, I think that's Air Force Base. Yeah, you're exactly right. Yeah. That way to go. Well, you know, I lived in Mississippi, and I know you're bad to the bone. Mississippi Jerry. is uh, one of the greatest military states in this in this in this nation. It really right? is. So awesome stuff. Well, listen, guys. Once again, um, <laughs> we've gone we've gone long. I'm just going to have to start building a break in, but because um, I know that you know how the radio business is, I do have to hit. I'm me. sorry. No, it's it's, I, I, I just... it, it's it's great, man. No, I'm not. Don't be sorry. I mean, I'm glad we're. That's what we want to do, man. We're getting some feedback on this segment, and uh, but just... I tell you what, I, I'm not so sure that you couldn't set up a show somewhere. Uh, on the internet or something like this where you could make calls into it with Larry and there's no telling what it would yeah, do. Yeah, I may have to just do a separate show. I may just have to get him to give me a, a, a music show too because I would love to do one, man. Uh-huh. I, I'd love to do. In addition to sports, this I'd love to have great. you. I, I, I so, I so <laughs> enjoyed that story about the Commodores. Oh, my God, that was so great, Larry. Thank you. Now, that was man, good. And that, that just – and that happened a lot, not just – uh, uh, with other bands, also we would meet them at the truck stop, and they were. Up, but, but this this was special because those guys, man, you know what they did? Oh, they were like, the best. The absolute yeah. best. In fact, I might have to do. And when he says I'm the driver, the band's mm-hmm. sleeping. That was so cool. I'll never forget that. I know it sounds <laughs> funny, but I just can't stand the pain. Oh man, Girl, I'm leaving I you tomorrow. It. All right, guys, I got, we got to get to the break. Larry, it was fun all right, again. Thank you, thank you, Tom. Thank you. Appreciate you, Larry. And, uh, yeah, send me some more feedback this week, and uh, there they go. All right, we're going to get to the break, and uh, we're going to kind of double up these breaks because we went long, and then we're going to come back with Brett Pritchard with the Auburn Report on the other side. So keep it dialed in here. Have fun with that that segment. I'm just going to have to start building a break into that segment. But we'll be back with uh, Brett Pritchard and the Auburn Report. We'll hear you again here in a few minutes, so stay with us. On the next Inside the Locker Room with Coach Wimp Sanderson and Barry Sanderson. Tune in Monday. You'll know football's getting close because the great Max Howell will be back with us at 7.30. In the second hour, Doug Bell will join us. We'll talk about the BMW. We'll find out who's in the final 30 for the FedEx Cup Championship. We'll also take your phone calls and get ready for Alabama football. It will start next Saturday. Inside the Locker Room, weekdays 7 to 9 a.m. on Tide 100.9. And Tide 100.9. 100.9.com. Life doesn't wait for when your finances are in perfect order. It just happens. But no matter what surprises come your way, Alabama Credit Union will be here to help make it affordable with great personal loans, mortgages, and auto loans. They offer an easy application process and fast decisions so you can stay focused on feeling good about whatever life brings your way. Alabama Credit Union will be here to help make it affordable with great personal loans. Base as low as 3.99. And yes, specials on the all-new Frontier V6. $3,000 instant savings and rates as low as 2.99. See Kylan or BJ 
day to day at Townsend Nissan. Tide 100.9, Tuscaloosa weather. A good supply of sunshine today. Tuscaloosa's high around 90. Tonight, fair and pleasant, the low 65. Tomorrow's sunny with a high at 91. Hot and dry weather Sunday and Monday. The sky's sunny both days. Highs between 92 and 95 degrees. I'm James Spann on the ABC 3340 Weather Center on Tide 100.9. Tuscaloosa's Old Colony Golf Course is an 18-hole championship layout designed by 1976 U.S. Open champion Jerry Pate. Director of Golf John Gray and fitting specialist Bob Montgomery are PGA certified. Mike Shivitz is the head professional and director of the Tuscaloosa Junior Golf Program. Call today to secure a tee time at the Tuscaloosa Championship Golf Course Everyone can play. 205-562-3201. Old Colony is operated by Para. Los Tarascos has been serving Mexican favorites like burritos, fajitas, and quesadillas since 1999. Their new location is at 4100 Owen Parkway in Northport. And, of course, you can find Los Tarascos in Tuscaloosa at 110 Skyland Boulevard. The bar areas feature big screen television so you can enjoy your favorite sporting events. Los Tarascos features daily happy hour. Something so good. It'll leave her speechless. I'm Tom Osmond, your jeweler at Finisher and Osmond Jewelers. Not so easy to find on McFarland between Edgar's and local roots. You see him on WVUA 23 covering sports and on Tider Insider TV on Tuesday nights. Don't miss a minute of the Gary Harris Show. Weekdays from 9 to 11 on Tide 100.9. Thing to do. Right, 10 32 28 minutes and for the hour 11 o'clock that's what we call a dramatic pause there before we hit the tiger that that was that was for effect Brett. that was not a mess up on the board or anything that was just that was that was for effect good morning Brett Pritchard with us from the Auburn uh, Blitz to talk a little Auburn football how's it going buddy Good, buddy. I thought my phone died right there before, and I was like, man, something happened. <laughs> well, I, I told you a couple weeks ago, I, I'm going to have to figure out how we're going to do this. This Larry the Music Man segment has taken off, I mean, and so uh, we wound up doing about 25 minutes, so we had to do two run two breaks and got us all out of sorts here, but man, it is just, it's, uh, people love, I know you do too, they love the history of, of you know, Southern Rock, and, Absolutely. and it's been it's been fun. Hey, uh, before we get to, you know, what's happening, getting ready for the game, some breaking recruiting news this morning, four-star defensive lineman Nate Marshall has from Illinois has flipped his commitment from, from Michigan to Auburn, I mean, this is a really good-looking uh, defensive lineman. Uh, tell us what, you know, went into this. Yeah, uh, big time uh, pickup uh, moves Auburn's class up to number five, I think, across the board on all the, the sites. But adds to an already talented defensive line class uh, that has Jared Smith, who we saw a little bit last night, why he's so highly touted at Thompson, played extremely well. Uh, Malik Autry from Opelika, I'll see him up close and personal tonight okay. uh, from Opelika uh, as they play Benjamin Russell, uh, Jordan Crawford, and Antonio Coleman. Uh, Already a uh, a loaded class for Auburn on the defensive line, and then you add uh, you know Marshall in with him uh, with this class. And uh, again, this is a kid that you know Auburn's really stayed on and built a relationship. Uh, defensive line coach uh, Coach Williams uh, been targeting him really since day one, and you know they're from the same area, uh, so they have a relationship. They have a lot of things in common, and. You know, he's been committed to, to Michigan since, I think, back in March or April. And, um, and, and you know, of course, uh, you know, Michigan got a lot of uh, momentum coming off a national championship. And um, and even though he didn't come to Big Cat Weekend, Auburn really kept pursuing him and, and, and making him a priority, Gary. And I think that's what, what it boils down to now in recruiting is, is making sure and building relationships and, and stressing – you know, to some of these kids that you are a priority for us and we need you. I know these other schools need you, but it's how you go in and sell it. I mean, I know that's uh, probably a tongue-in-cheek say, uh, way to say things, but it really is how you can sell your program and, and make a kid feel like, hey, they're they're an important piece to this. So, yeah, uh, a big-time pickup. Uh, I don't think Auburn's finished. I think this puts them at 23 commitments off the top of my head. Uh, you know, there's still some, some guys out there. I mean, Auburn's still awaiting uh, a decision from Deuce Knight. I mean, although he continues to stay committed to Notre Dame, I think, um, you know, he's the guy that Auburn has targeted in this class. 
as the quarterback. And that's really the only piece that's missing, Gary, if you look at it. I mean, Auburn's really done well across the board with this class, but you, you look down and they have no quarterback committed. And um, so it's important. Uh, I think he's an, he is a very important piece, and maybe some news could be coming out of that camp in the next week or two. All right, we'll keep an eye on that. Football wise, um, yeah, for all these teams around the country, of course, we got to get a little taste of it this weekend. Before we get to uh, Auburn specifically, the Week Zero deal. First of all, and I know we call it—I'm not a fan as a TV and radio sportscaster because it throws me off. It's like it's Week Zero for high school, but it's Week right. One for my football Friday show tonight. So every week I got all right. What week is it for high school? So, but if at least in high school now, it's it's taken off. I mean, it's basically a full schedule for college football. If we're going to do a Week Zero. I'm not saying, and I know we got a ton of games coming up Thursday night, and we'll have a bunch on Friday, but four games right. this weekend, only one really marquee game with Florida State and Georgia Tech over in Dublin. Don't you think if we're going to do a week zero, we have maybe have six to eight games on Saturday, then maybe have a Sunday night game too? Something to give us, uh, if you're going to give us an appetizer, give us a little more than this, right? Yeah, I don't really even consider this a week. I mean, I, it's, it's uh, okay, you want to play a week before everybody else, so be it, but uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know that you can really call this a true opening weekend for college football. Everybody knows that next weekend is the true opening weekend for college football, and it's the whole schedule for everybody's kind of kind of based around that. So, but you know, with a couple of off dates scattered through the season for everybody now, it, it doesn't really matter when you start. I don't guess, but um, but next next Saturday is the 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 weekend everybody's looking forward to. Yeah. All right. Let's get to Auburn because uh, I was talking yesterday on my show about openers. I mean, you can have, uh, you know, Georgia's got Clemson. I mean, you can have, you know, one of those kind of games where you know you're dialed right. in. You have to be. And you can right. have a game like Alabama's got against a Western Kentucky team who all your fans expect you to blow out, but they're not bad. By the way, TJ uh, Finley's still just a junior. Can you believe that? <laughs> but, but, you know, I'm telling you, man. He's, you know, <laughs> hey, hey, no cut on the kid, but man, he he's the he's the gift that keeps on giving, man. He's, he's, he's still been, just a junior. He's been on a tour all over. How in the world is he just a junior? I don't just, know, but he is. Blows my mind. But he, so, uh, you can have a game like that where you, you know, you still going up against a team that can give you some trouble, and then you can have an opener like Auburn's got uh, against. Uh, no disrespect right. to Alabama A and M, but this is an out man but, team. Yeah, uh, yeah. I guess. We when you're in your second season and in your, you know, for Auburn, it seems like, yeah, you know, it's the opener. Um, but I guess maybe this might be pretty good because you're coming off a year, which was up and down and trying to establish, you know, your quarterback more so this year and your offense. So just the, the thought of playing a, 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 a opener like this against a team that's completely outmanned. Well, you know, I think, I think you got to go back real quick and do a little bit of reflection. Auburn didn't end the season well last year. You know, the, the fourth and 31 with Alabama, obviously, you know, and losing that game the way they did and then going into that bowl game and really not being competitive with Maryland. And, uh, you know, a lot of upheaval with your coaching staff as far as you freeze wanting to go in another direction, both on the offensive and defensive side of the football. So really it's almost like a starting over deal, uh, for Hugh Freeze. Hugh Freeze remains, some players remain, but this, this is a revamp program, revamped culture, revamped everything. And, you know, going into the spring, um, you know, you saw some of the freshmen that were able to enroll early, kind of go ahead and start making their mark. But, you know, the concentration's been around uh, the new coordinators, DJ Durkin and Derek Nix and some of the guys that were added to this staff. Uh, and, and of course, the the new recruits that were coming in and just the whole momentum deal. So, and I think you're right. I think opening up with an Alabama A&M, you're right. It's nothing against them, but this should be, you know, if Auburn's got uh, their ducks in a row, uh, should go out and, and and really kind of sleepwalk to probably a 30, 40 point win. I think they're favored by 50, which I didn't even know they put lines out like that anymore. But anyway, I think uh, I saw a line yesterday where Auburn was favored by 50. But at the end of the day, uh, I think what you're looking for in a game like this is, of course, you're clearly overmatching this thing. Do you look like you've been preparing do you do you come mm -hmm. out and you look sharp there's no penalties there's there's no miscommunications there's no confusion some things like that i think that's what you're going to take away from a game like that on saturday next week is is auburn is are they dialed in do, do they look like the offensive line has gelled and, and they're making the right calls is peyton thorne crisp on his throws is this timing good is is the secondary 
you know, doing what they're doing need to be doing in the in the in the back part of the defense. So you're going to be looking for that kind of stuff because the next week Auburn does have a formidable opponent. I know Cal isn't the best team in the country, but they return a lot of stars. I agree. Uh, and, and and they and look, look, we went out there last year and, and held on for dear life right. had to make a play at the very end of the game. So they're going to come in with expectation in a in a running back that gave Auburn fits last year. So. Um, Auburn, again, coming off last year and then going into basically a brand new look, uh, I think it's important that they look the part coming out of the gate. I agree with you. Um, and for Auburn, too, they're just one of those teams that, I mean, again, even when I go through the schedule, you know, I, I, you know, I can see, you know, everything lined up perfectly. You know, nine and three, ten and two, and and then if it doesn't go well, you could see you know right around that that six and six type thing again. It's a walk our team, and I think one thing that that of course Auburn people are dialed in. I think around the country, I, I don't think people realize, and and I want to get your reaction because it's really kind of hard to believe that a program with the resources that Auburn has has had three straight losing seasons. I don't know how many people right. are aware of that outside. Of, that's pretty remarkable, to be honest with you, Brett. I mean, Auburn, I don't care who the coach is. Auburn should never have three straight losing seasons. I think you'd agree with me on that. No, I, I, I totally agree. And we said that on our show so many times. I mean, you know, Alabama, Auburn, I know Alabama's been through some tough times prior to Nick Saban. You know, and it should never be that way, no matter who the coach is. I mean, if you're doing – your job with the resources that's provided to you uh, and, and the things that, that that both of those universities have at their disposal, I think the worst you should ever be is a seven- or eight-win team. I mean, I, I've said that multiple times on our show. If you're falling below that mark, you're not. somebody's not doing their job or multiple people aren't doing their job. And, and so you're right. For the first time in my whole life, I've never witnessed Auburn go three straight years with a losing season, but I have now. So, yeah, Hugh Freeze came in to a program that does have a lot of things at its disposal, has a top-notch football-only facility that was built just a couple of years ago, um, you know, has play, plays in an outstanding stadium, has the, one of the best fan bases in the country, has got a, you know, historic uh, top 15 program, uh, you know, ranking to it. He, you got everything you need, can prove that you can get to a national championship game and win it, and then get back to another one, so... Uh, Hugh Freeze is his hairs on fire when it comes to recruiting. I think that's evident right now, and what this class looks like currently, and then what the 26 class has already started out looking like, being ranked number one. Um, the 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 rubber's got to hit the road now, though, Gary. Auburn's got to win football games. If you want to keep these recruits buying in, you want to continue to get, have this momentum. Auburn's got to go out and compete, and I mean they've got to compete in all 12 games. They've got to win the games they're supposed to win. You got to win a game maybe that you're not supposed to win, but you don't need to be blown out. The days of losing by 25, 30 points to somebody, even if it's Georgia or Alabama or Oak, I mean, you've mm-hmm. got to compete whether it's on the road or at home. So mm-hmm. that's what people want to see out of this out of this program. Yeah, I love the way you said that because I, I I know again I cover Alabama, you cover Auburn, but I I would feel the same way if if, if this out you know it's just, yeah it's time to time to win some games. I mean if if you're an Auburn fan or uh, an Auburn person, it, I mean it's yeah you know this is this is the season. I mean whether you're a national championship team or not, this is the season to make a little hey. I agree with you that a hundred percent on the offense. So we've talked about how they've upgraded the offense in terms of the personnel, primarily with the wide receivers. But again, to get back to, to Peyton Thorne, I get the vibe from talking to other people, not just you, and, and you know, covering the team a little bit from here, that the Auburn coaches really do feel like that you're going to see a different quarterback. You're going to see a guy that, that not only is going to be a game manager, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but flourish a little bit. Is that the vibe you're getting? Uh, Brett, that they're not just looking at Peyton Thorne as, you know, you just take care of the ball and and don't make mistakes, but make some plays. They're ready for him to make some plays. Am I right? Yeah, he has to make plays, Gary. I mean, he's – look, we, we've we said this a million times, on, you know, back and forth talking about college football. The quarterback stirs the drink. They're the straw that stirs the drink for, for you on offense. And if your quarterback – it doesn't matter how good your skill guys are and you're – offensive line and all that kind of stuff. If the quarterback uh, is is mediocre, then you're probably going to have mediocre results. And uh, Peyton Thorne's already proved he can be as good as anybody in the country. He did that a couple of years ago at Michigan State, mm-hmm. threw for 31 touchdowns, 3,200 yards, led Michigan State to an 11-1 and 
season that year. And I mean, you know, just a, a, you know, the top that you could ask for. And then last year he comes in, you know, in the summer, uh, a little bit behind the eight ball and, um, really uh, kind of has to hit the ground running with a new coach and have to learn a lot in a very small amount of time. And, you know, you saw flashes uh, of, of what Peyton Thorne could do, but you never could really get that consistency going. And look, I'm, I'm not throwing stones, but I think if Coach Freeze had, uh, if he were on this show right now, he'd say, look, a little bit of that's probably my fault out of the gate because, once again, couldn't make a decision on who you wanted to start at quarterback. You were flipping and flopping between Robbie Ashford and, and Peyton Thorne, and nobody could ever really get you know, their feet under him. And when he finally decided to go with Peyton Thorne uh, outside of the Alabama game, I think Peyton Thorne was above 60% passing the football. And so – uh, I think that goes for anybody. You gotta, you gotta have a little bit of confidence and you gotta have that consistency if you ever want to perform. So there's no question who it is now. Peyton Thorne knows that he's had an upgrade in receiver. Uh, the offensive line's better. He's got a very talented running back room. So all eyes are going to be on him. Can he make the throws that, that need to be made to, to move the chains to, to keep the offense on the field and, and, and end in, in touchdowns and not field goals. So, yeah, I mean, he knows that. He's a veteran uh, when it comes to uh, his, you know, his career and, and how long he's played in college football at this point. Uh, he knows the, 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 you know, the responsibilities on his back uh, for this team, and I think he's embraced it in this, in this camp so far. And on defense, you've talked about Durkin, DJ Durkin and, and Charles Kelly and, and, you know, Ron Roberts. And again, I, I know you're like me. I don't like throwing coaches under the bus. Ron Roberts wouldn't no. have got hired at Auburn unless he's a good coach. He's got a great track record. But for whatever reason, the defense last year was much like the team up and down. And I think the word I'm hearing this year is aggression, aggressiveness. You know, that you saw it on fourth and 31. I mean, Auburn sat back and really didn't rush anybody and it, it burned them. Uh, that seemed to kind of be the Auburn defense last year is, you know, listen, we don't want to give up. The big plays, although sometimes you're working so hard not to give them up that you do anyway, but it just didn't seem like that aggressiveness was there. I'm hearing that's not going to be the case this season. Yeah, it's a totally different look. And D.J. Durkin's personality, uh, if you were trying to create uh, what what a defensive coordinator should look like, it's D.J. Durkin. I mean, he, he penalizes this player. He came out and said this this week. He penalizes his players for not celebrating big plays. Uh, if you make a big tackle and you just stand up, walk around, come back to the huddle, you, then you get in trouble. He wants you to show emotion. He wants you to to really look at, uh, you know, working hard and, and reaping the benefits of working hard. And, you know, Gary, you and I both know football is an aggressive sport. And you got to have a bunch of guys on the defensive side of the football that, that are relentless and have no fear and, and are ready to, to, you know, bust the guy's face in front of. And uh, I think that's the personality that D.J. Durkin has brought to this defense. And you've already seen it uh, in, in the way the defensive line has been playing in, in fall camp. And now that with the start of regular practice and, you know, some of the guys like Malik Blockton and Amaris Williams, some of the younger guys that are that are part of this team already making noise and then all, making some of the veterans that are here step up a little bit. So, yeah, I love the aggressive nature. To me, that's what defense is all about. Uh, guys that want to get after you and make plays. All right, before we close out the segment, uh, Bo Nix um, gets the starting job with the Broncos, Sean Payton naming him. Again, I know he didn't finish at Auburn, but he's from a you know Auburn family, and, and I know a lot of the Auburn people are really proud that, uh, that Bo Nix uh, – you know, he he did what he had to do to get where he wanted to go, and it worked. I mean, he got he went to Oregon. Now he was a you know top twelve pick in the NFL draft, and he's a rookie starter in the NFL. So uh, pretty cool. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I, I don't. I'm not surprised at all, uh, Gary. To be honest, I you know remember watching Bo Nix and call a bunch of his games in high school. Yeah, when he's he was a stud. In Valley. Yeah, and you know, a legacy coming to Auburn and all his CC freshmen and. You know, it kind of went downhill from there because, you know, let's be honest. I mean, there, there wasn't very good leadership at Auburn while he was at, at Auburn, and there was a lot of turmoil there. So um, it, he, he made the, the best choice for him and went to Oregon, had two great years, um, and and it's translated into uh, being drafted by the Broncos and performing to the point where he's now the starter. So I'm proud for him, uh, proud for his family, and uh, 
you know, I really think he's going to shine in the pro. All right, man. Great segment as uh, always. And uh, Auburn folks need to be ready for the Auburn Blitz. Absolutely. Today at noon, uh, here in about an hour and 10 minutes, I uh, got a lot to cover. And uh, we'll be talking a lot about this recruiting class as it continues to move up the ladder and uh, maybe some other potential guys that are on the horizon. So, but. Gary, appreciate it, man. Looking forward to uh, next week. It's game time. Yeah, finally. It'll really be game time, and, and I'm pumped up, too. Thanks, man. Thank you, buddy. All right, Brett Pritchard with us here. Before we hit the break, I do want to uh, remind you that it's a great weekend to play golf. Uh, final weekend without college football here in Alabama. So you might want to consider a round of golf at Tall Pines Golf Club right here in Tuscaloosa. I call it a, a hidden gem in in beautiful East Tuscaloosa, the old uh, Woodland Forest Country Club. Uh, brand new greens, practice facility, putting greens, driving range, swimming pool, big, beautiful swimming pool. And um, you can get a membership for the pool as well. You can get a membership for the golf course, or you can just call and make a tee time and play golf. 205-556-1232. 205-556-1232. Tall Pines Golf Course, a hidden gem in Tuscaloosa. We'll be back with the final segment of the Gary Harris Show. We can squeeze in a phone call. I think we've got time for one or two calls. If you want to give us a ring, 205-342-9904 is the number on the Pinnacle Park at North River Hotline. We'll be back on this TGIF edition right after this. Coming up, Coming up on The Game with Ryan Fowler. Coming up on the Friday edition of The Game, we're going to do our free-for-all Friday edition sponsored by Brian Harden Construction. We're also going to feature College Football Hall of Fame, Pro Football Hall of Famer. John Hanna is going to be talking about the pigskin preview. Going to be a big kickoff event coming up on Monday. He'll tell you more about that. We'll talk to Brent Beer, and we'll take your phone calls starting at 2 p.m. here on The Game on Tide 100.9, 1230. WTBC, your home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. The longest running sports program in Tuscaloosa. The game with Ryan Fowler. Weekdays from 2 to 6 p.m. on Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. If you haven't already, you've got to try Tuscaloosa's unique breakfast, brunch, and lunch concept. Brick and Spoon, downtown Tuscaloosa, Timerson Square. It's fresh food with a Cajun flair featuring a full bar with build-your-own Bloody Marys and mimosas. Open daily, 7 a.m. until 2 p.m. Available for after- And these changes within just a couple of days. Text SUPPORT to 511-511. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Text fees may apply. Tide 100.9, Tuscaloosa weather. A good supply of sunshine today. Tuscaloosa's high around 90. Tonight, fair and pleasant, the low 65. Tomorrow, sunny with a high at 91. Hot and dry weather Sunday and Monday. The sky's sunny both days. Highs between 92 and 95 degrees. I'm James Spann on the ABC 3340 Weather Center on Tide 100.9. Where the season never ends. This is your home of Alabama sports. Tide 100.9 and screaming on the Tide 100.9. 100.9 app. Go fast. We're running out of time, but a couple of app messages. Download the app. What's the motivation of Chuck Martin in making a serious allegation public without providing any evidence whatsoever or going to the NCAA instead to harm Nicholson himself, to harm Alabama for attention? All the above, no evidence, and all the bravado is not believable. Seems clearly to be an arrogant but hurt lie. That's from SLC Bama Girl in Salt Lake. Well, Bo Nix ought to be good. He only played six years of college, LOL. That's from Uber Steve in Northport. All right, real quick note. Rowing is becoming an official SEC sport. Row, tide, roll. Alabama rowing, now part of an official SEC sport. All right. Ellis, listen, man, we got a minute, so you're my pal, but go fast. Roll Tide. Just, uh, I'm excited about uh, next week. We're down to single digits, Gary Harry. Yes, sir, we are, my friend. Uh, and uh, I'm ready for work, ready to get down there Friday. Well, we are, and we're ready to get you down here, man. And uh, maybe, I'm, maybe I can meet you on Saturday or you can get by the radio station or something. Thank you, Ellis. we got to close it out here for the TGIF Roll edition. Tide. I'm Gary Harris. Chase Brumfield did all the heavy lifting, and he's coming up next with uh, Wyatt Fulton for T-Town Sports Daily. Catch me on TV tonight with your local sports. And Football Friday tonight, the debut 1030 to 1130 on WVUA 23. Of course, the scoreboard show here on Tide at 10 p.m. Have a great weekend everybody. I'll talk to you again on Monday.